Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. So essentially we're going to be creating a uh, block breaker game called Trillo. And you can see here that when we start it we get this uh, start screen and we, you know, we can go ahead and click on that. And uh, that's going to give us this uh, game where we can now actually start playing. And there we go, I just lost it we can take it, get taken back to the start screen. But uh, I can play it again, there we go, and you can see that it uh, starts all over again. So yeah, there we go. Um, a pretty fun game. Whoops, uh, lost there again. Okay, so, so that's essentially what we're going to be playing, uh, creating in uh, in this project. Hello there, and welcome back to this projects in Java course, where today we're going to be starting our second project, which is going to be a game. This game is going to be kind of like Space Invaders. Um, I hope I'm actually correct in that statement. I'm not 100% sure what Space Invaders is, but. Um, Hey, you know, I, I, I think I think I'm correct. Anyway, so let's get started. Um, uh, I've heard it somewhere, and I, th I, I think that's what we're making. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, call the project Trillo. So I mean, I just I just figured I I I'd name it Trillo. It seems like a like a fun, cool, mo um, you know, hip name for it. So let's you know, I don't know, name it Trillo. Hopefully, there isn't some kind of some company named Trillo that's gonna you know. Sue me or anything. All right. Um, okay, let's create our main class. All right, and it's going to be the uh, the class where we're going to have the main method. All right, main method, simple stuff. I'm taking an awful lot of time to type up the main method. All right, there we go. So now we're ready to actually start. All right. So first of all, I have my uh, all my game, you know, graphics here. These graphics are pretty advanced. Took, they took me like uh, five hours to create each. So uh, first of all, we have our ball here. So that's uh, you know, just a picture of a soccer ball. Um, that definitely took took the longest. Then we have a blue square here. Now this, of course, was a, is just a work of art. Um, and then also a green square. Of course, that uh, I had to start completely from scratch there. Um, we also have a paddle here, which um, is this is, is is a paddle. Um, yeah. <laughs> then we also have a red square, um, and finally we have a yellow square as well, because I mean you can't leave out yellow. All right, there we go. So um, that's the uh, the art for this um, for this game. Now let's go ahead and actually start. So of course all of these um, you know um, data you know. Graphics will be available um, in a link below the video. Um, but uh, let's start actually writing. So let's uh, create our J frame here. Okay. Uh, let's call this uh, Trillo. Don't know what I why I chose the name Trillo. It's a weird name, but you know, it'll do. All right. So now let's import the J frame. So this is going to go ahead and be the uh, the main frame of our. Um, of our game. So of course we are going to be doing this in swing as well. So now that we have our main method created, we're going to go ahead and also create another another class here and this is just going to be a block breaker panel. So essentially the game is going to be sort of like a where we break break blocks sort of. So that's the whole idea. You're going to see as as we go along um, what exactly the the point here is. Okay, so now um, let's actually go and implement block block breaker panel. Um, okay, and so here block breaker panel is going to go ahead and extend. Whoops, extends uh, J panel and implement key listener. Whoops, key listener. So by doing this, it's actually going to allow us to actually use and implement. So it's going to allow us to use this block breaker panel um, as an actual panel. So let's go and add the unimplemented methods, and then the key listener will just allow us to use this to add in um, for the key. So essentially, to listen for uh, when we press a key um, to actually do something. So let's go ahead and actually uh, add the unimplemented methods of the key listener. All right, there we go. So we have key typed, key pressed. And now let's also add a constructor here. So block breaker panel. All right, there we go. 
And uh, so now that we have that done, we can go ahead and actually go ahead and add in a, uh, a new class here. And it's actually going to be a block. All right, there we go. So now let's go to implement block. So block is going to extend rectangle. All right, now let's go ahead and import rectangle from uh, java.awt. All right, there we go. So we are going to, of course, going to be using a uh, rectangle, um, rectangle, uh, I'm sorry, not rectangle, awt elements, since we can use them. Um, so we're going to create an image picture. This is going to be the actual um, image for block from awt as well. Make sure that you have a, keep all your um, imports consistent. Okay, and then here we're also going to add a constructor for block. There we go. And in the constructor, we're going to take int a, int b, you're going to see why we need this in a second here, int w, and int h. Also a string s as well. So a is going to be the x coordinate, so the, uh, the x coordinate of our block. B is going to be the y coordinate of our block. Uh, w is going to be with the width, and then h is going to be the height. So it's pretty simple stuff. And then a string s is going to be just the uh, the location of the uh, the location of the uh, image that's going to actually go ahead and be the. All right. So now that we have that done, let's also add another method here. This is going to be the uh, public void draw method. And it's going to take in graphics G as input and component C as well. All right, there we go. It's also taking the component as input as well. All right. Okay, there we go. So now also here, we're going to add a field. This is going to be Boolean destroyed. So essentially, when our actual um, when our actual game is going to go ahead and uh, the ball is going to hit a block, it's going to destroy the block. So that's why we need to add a destroyed here. So here in destroyed, what we're going to go ahead and do is if destroyed, okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, do g dot draw image. Okay, and we don't really need we don't need all the all of these. We're just going to do um, picture. This is the picture right here. Okay, then x comma y and then x y width and height. And then finally, we're going to draw in the component. So this is going to be the component there. Okay, so other than that, then that should be good. Now let's go ahead and actually add in these variables here. Um, so let's do Let's see, let's do something like uh, int x equals, we could just do int x comma y. Okay, then do x equals one. Or actually, no, x equals, um, yeah, right. This dot x equals x, and then this dot y equals y. Um, okay, on the other hand, though, in rectangle, we should, in theory, yes, yeah, so we already have this. Um, um, x coordinate. So let's not let's not override that here. Let's just do um, uh, pos x like that. Pos pos x and then pos y. All right, there we go. That's just, just that's just make it uh, a little better. There we go. Pos x and pos y. And then here, uh, let's do yeah, pos x and then position y. All right, let's do the same thing for width and height. Int width comma uh, height. This dot width equals w, and then this dot height equals height. There we go. And here we're going to do width, comma, height. All right, and there we go. That should be good. Um, so now it's going to go ahead and draw the block if uh, you know it's not destroyed. 
Okay, so that's looking good. We're getting there. Um, now let's actually go ahead and assign the picture to the actual string, to the actual uh, location that we, uh, you know, got from it. So we're going to do picture Im equals image io dot read new file. And then here we're going to do s. So this is going to be the uh, location that we actually pass in. Let's import file. There we go. Looking good. And let's sort of start on this with the try catch block. All right. And there we go. All right. So that's going to go and read the uh, actual image from our file system and then assign that to the actual picture. All right. There we go. Um, so yeah, looking good. Um, let's move on now. Let's go back to a uh, block breaker panel. Okay. And here in block breaker panel, we can now move on and uh, do um, block paddle equals new block. And let's just assign um, something for the x and y coordinates like 175 and 480. All right, and then now we got to assign width and height, let's do 150. And then what 25 also. And then finally, for the um, location, we're going to do uh, this paddle dot PNG. Paddle dot PNG. There we go. That's going to be what's going to be moving on, on, on the bottom of the screen. Okay, okay, so um, looks good, looks good. So that's the paddle there. Um, now, we should be able to just go ahead and do something like um, add key listener. This. There we go. So that's going to add this class as the key listener, and we can do this because it implements key listener. So that's why we can do that. And then also let's uh, set focusable to true. All right. All right so what the set focusable is going to do is just going to make sure that we can actually focus on the component. Um, you're going to see what that means in, uh, once we actually get this get this running here. Okay, so other than that, then that should be good. We should be good to go. Now let's actually go, go ahead and go back to main, finally configure some of the things in main here that we need to. Um, so let's do a uh, block breaker panel. Uh, panel panel equals new block breaker panel. All right, there we go. Now let's do frame dot get content pane dot add panel, whoops, don't need the constraints here, panel. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead and do frame dot, whoops, frame dot set uh, default close operation, j frame dot exit on close. All right, there we go. That's going to make it so that we can actually exit um, when we do go ahead and click the all right, there we go. Now let's go ahead and also do a uh, frame dot um, set uh, visible the true. So that's actually going to show us the frame. Then let's do a uh, frame dot set size to 490 by uh, 600 pixels. Just uh, assuming roughly that's what we want. There we go. Okay, now let's also do frame dot set resizable and let's set that to false. So we're not going to be able to resize the actual window. So now we're actually going to run this. All right, and there we go. So here we have our Trillo app. As you can see, we can't resize it because we set resizable to false. And so we do have an error here. Um, so right now we're getting an IO exception, so we can't read the uh, the input file. Um, so that's because right here in our block.java, um, instead of doing new file s, we need to do new file um, src slash plus s. Since it does, it, it does start looking for the actual files in the project and not the src folder. So now when you run this now, it should be good to go. All right, and there we go. So you can see no more error. So we aren't actually receiving anything to the screen, but we don't get the errors. That's already good. So we did find the file. And now we can actually go ahead and start implementing um, the other parts of this application. And uh, I'll see you then. Till soon. 
Hello there and welcome back to this project in Java course, where today we're actually going to go ahead and start implementing our block breaker panel here, which, which is going to go ahead and uh, actually make our application run. This is sort of like the, the main part of our application. Okay, so let's start off by uh, going ahead and creating an array list of blocks. So, our, whoops, uh, all right, our array list, so this is going to be our actual blocks here. array list block uh, blocks equals new array list here of blocks there we go let's import array list okay looks good all right and now that we've done that we can go ahead and uh, do uh, block ball equals new block here okay so this is going to be our actual um, ball that's going to be flying across the screen so here, let's just do something like, um, let's see, um, 237 for the exposition. Um, let's do uh, something like maybe 4, 435 for the Y position. So I'm just thinking about where exactly this will go. And let's just do something like 25 and 25 for the uh, for the size. Um, and now let's uh, assign it the, uh, the value here. So if we go to Trillo here, we can see that it's uh, ball.png. All right, there we go. Okay, so now that we have that done, um, yeah, now that we have that done, that's good. Um, we actually, we're actually going to take this paddle out also up here. Yeah, there we go. That should be good to go. All right, so now that we've done that, we can actually go and actually start running this and maybe adding some of these components, actually. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, go to our default package. We're going to create a new class here, and this class is going to be called Animate. All right, there we go. So in this anime class, the idea is that what's going to be is there's going to be a runnable thread. What's actually going to be a runnable that's going to run in a thread. And this is actually is going to go and update our um, actual block block breaker panel right here, this class right here, every 10 milliseconds or so. So let's go and uh, assign it the block breaker panel. So block breaker panel p, something like that. And let's go and um, yeah, add an implemented method of the runnable interface. There we go. And here in run, all we have to do is uh, while true. Uh, let's see. Let's do block block uh, block breaker. There we go. Do it like that. Block breaker dot um, and then update. So we don't have the uh, the update method here yet. Let's go ahead and implement that update method. Uh, I think we can just do. Uh, like this, there we go. Um, there we go, create method update, there we go. So now that we have this update method. So we didn't actually implement that, don't worry, we'll get to that as well. Let's put it up here actually, just like that, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and then here after that, we're gonna do try thread.sleep 10 milliseconds, um, and then catch, um, I think it's interrupted exception. Exception, yeah, it's interrupted exception. All right, there we go. We're just gonna do in e dot print stack trace. All right, okay, looks good. Uh, what seems to be the problem with the update method here? Yeah, we just save that. There we go. Set so implement. Okay, so that's good. So now we have uh, we have our animate ready. Now let's go ahead and go to our block breaker panel, and we're gonna go ahead and actually implement um, it actually running this this thread. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and go to create a method here public void paint component graphics g and this is actually going to go ahead and override it so we don't need to call it anywhere let's import graphics there we go and here for now all we're going to do is we're going to do paddle dot draw and pass in this graphics g and then also for the component we're just going to pass in this and there we go it's simple as that it's going to draw the paddle on this graphics and this is going to be the component itself so that's actually what that's what that's gonna do. So yeah, that's what he's just gonna it's gonna draw the image there uh, with all this data. Now what we can actually do is go ahead and remove this pos x and pos y. We don't actually need that. And then also same with width and height. And instead, of just do this dot x and then this dot y as well. Um, and then same with width and height. Um, they're already built in from what we extend. So I I I, I, was, I was just thinking about it, and there's really no point in doing that. 
Um, so yeah, so let's also update this to x and y as well. So we just, um, so yeah, a rectangle, when we extend it, rectangle already has the public int x and public int y, and same for width and height. So we don't actually need to go ahead and, uh, you know, redeclare the variables there. So it just makes sense to do it this way. It's just um, cleaner and, you know, just better as a whole. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and uh, move on here. So we draw the paddle. Um, now we actually need to go ahead and run the thread. So we're going to do that in um, keep pressed here, right here. So yeah, so right here we're going to do keep pressed. So we're going to do if um, e dot get key code um, is equal to key event dot vk enter. So when the user actually presses enter, so we, when we press the enter key, it's going to go ahead and uh, actually perform this code right here. So let's create an animate um, obje um, object here. Animate, animate. There we go. All right, and then down here we can just do animate dot, um, no, animate equals new animate, and then pass in this as input. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, so we forgot, totally forgot to create the uh, the uh, constructor and animate here. So let's do public animate and block breaker panel block um, BP. I guess that'll work. Um, so now we can just do this dot block breaker equals BP. All right, there we go. That looks good. So now that should be good. All right, there we go. Now we're just gonna do. Um, thread t equals new thread animate what we can actually do is do some uh, some java 8 programming here and just do um, new thread uh, pass in a lambda function here and then just copy in whoops put this right here there we go um, and then just copy in what well, we have an animate here so this run method All right there we go so we can just copy that in. That's going to hopefully be a bit cleaner. Okay, now we can also just go ahead and uh, actually just call the update method right in here. All right, and then that's going to call this update method right here. There we go. Well, whoops, I don't, don't need that. There we go. Um, okay, so we seem to have an error here. Um, yeah, so we got a E duplicate parameter. Oh, yeah, so we have a key event here, and then we also have a, so let's just do ERR here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that should be good to go. Um, so that's what that's what is going to go ahead and happen ha happen when we press the uh, the enter key. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a Java eight programming in um, in Java ten. So that's always great. Okay, and uh, other than that, then we should in theory be good to go. Um, actually running this application. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Um, let's run this. All right, and there we go. So you can see now we have this uh, this bar here, and we can actually now do enter, and now the thread, in theory, it should be running. Um, we don't have anything hack that actually happening right now, but we can just do something like um, system dot out dot uh, running, just to make sure that it's actually working here. So let's run that, and then enter. Oh, all no, oh, right. Okay, I'm a doofus. Um, here, when we do new thread. Um, after that, we need to do dot start. There we go. And now it should actually run. So let's now run this and then press enter. And now, as you can see, it's actually running. Okay, so let's close that. We can remove that for system on print end. And there we go. So we actually got our application running. We can actually delete animate now. We don't really need it. So yeah, that's just, um, I updated it a little bit, you know, just did it the old fashioned way and then showed you to do it the, the new fashioned way also. So that's always, you know, always good. Um, so it's like, sort of like an accidental, accidental, um, happy accident there. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, uh, what, what seems to be the, the, the problem? We got an error here? Oh, no, no. All right, but anyway, so that's all for this lesson. Next time we're going to start going over um, actually adding the logic for moving the paddle and maybe adding the actual um, block and ball logic. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'm going to see you there. Till soon. So we're going to continue with our project. We're actually going to be implementing some movements right now. When we, if we run this, we see that uh, we have the thing we have our uh, actual game and we can press enter that's going to run at the thread but then the thread actually doesn't do anything so that's why we're gonna that's what we're gonna do today so we're gonna fix that okay so to do this we're actually going to go ahead and uh, update this um, update method right here so right now it's not doing anything we're going to update this 
So here, essentially, um, all we really need to do is repaint just to see some basic movement. And then also here in key pressed, we're going to do if e dot get key code, key code, whoops, there we go, is equal to, um, yeah, OK, um, key event dot vk, right, there we go. We're going to do um, paddle dot x plus equals paddle dot um, and actually here we really do okay, on, on the other hand we can just do plus equals 15. Um, I think I think that'll be good. Okay and then now let's just do the same thing for uh, for the left except we're going to subtract 15. From x uh, let's do vk left that's going to be the left arrow here we're going to do minus. Now, of course, um, so we can run this now, and it will work. But um, essentially, we do have an error here. Uh, well, not an error. It's just going to be a flaw. So there we go. As you can see, it does update. But we can just go ahead and uh, just completely move it off the screen. So that's definitely not, not really what we want. So that's why we're going to close this. We're going to go ahead and do here instead. Um, and and e. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to do and and paddle dot x. Um, is more than zero. First of all, so that's for the right. So, or actually, no. On the other hand, it's going to be less than zero, and also not zero. Less than um, get width. So it's going to get width of this component minus, and then paddle dot width. There we go. So if um, if uh, the x position of um, so if the we're going to update x move x to the right only if the x position of the paddle is less than the get the width of our window minus the paddle dot width. So that's going to make it not move. So now you can see if we run this, press enter and then go ahead and move. It's not going to move off the screen. It's just going to stay there. So that's why uh, that's what this uh, and and. So we're going to do pretty much the same exact thing here, except we're going to do and and paddle dot x is uh, is more than zero. There we go. Um, and now when we run this, you're going to see if we press enter and there we go. So we can only move it um, so far. Um, and it, that just looks very good. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start implementing our actual blocks here, our array list of blocks. So to do this, it's actually going to be pretty simple. Um, here we're just going to do for int i equals 0, i is less than, let's just say 8, and then i plus plus. There we go. And here we're going to do blocks.add um, new block. And here we can just do something like, um, let's see. So uh, let, let's think about this, um, blocks.add, there we go. Um, let's think about this. So we need to add a new block. So essentially what we're doing here is we're going to be, we're going to have four of these. We can actually remove these, these things here, these curly brackets. We're going to have four of these, and then each for loop is essentially just going to, um, OK, what, yeah, one second. Let me format this so that I can actually explain what we're going to do. Each one of these is going to, and let me run this as well. Can I can I run it? Okay, this is so difficult. It's so difficult. It's so difficult to do this stuff. All right, there we go. Nope. Um, I still, of course, I, I still, I see. Got. Oh man, this is ruining my life. There we go. Now I can finally show you what I'm planning to do. So the way it's going to work is that we're going to have these four loops, and they're essentially, oh my god, and each one of these four loops is going to add a row of blocks. Um, that then the, our ball is actually going to jump and break. That's actually what, how, what that's going to do. And then each row is going to be of a different color. OK, so now that I finally got that out, I can uncomment this. And now here we're going to add a new block. So now what we need, first of all, we're setting the x position. So the x position for the first, uh, it, it needs to, for each block, it needs to be um, a certain sort of uh, uh, more. The, the x needs to be plus what the width of the block is. So let's say that our block width is, uh, let's say it's going to be 60. So we're going to do, um, I times 60, something like that, OK? So essentially, in this case, what's happening is uh, if I is equal to 1, then our 0, our position, our x position is going to be 0, so that's going to be to the very left. Then if I is 2, it's going to be 120, which is going to be the next sort of block, and so on and so on. So that's going to be the, um, the I, the x position. For the y position here, we can just set 0 for all the blocks, um, yeah? And then for the width, let's set 60. And then height, let's set, uh, I don't know, maybe also 60. 
All right, and then for the actual name of the block, let's just set something like, um, I don't know, let's just set uh, blue.png. All right, now let's comment this out just to make sure that everything works correctly. Um, okay, well, it does not work correctly. That's because right here in paint component, we didn't actually implement the draw thing. So here we're going to do blocks dot for each, uh, and then block, do some functional programming here as well. Um, and then here we can just do uh, block dot draw graphics, and then this. There we go, just like we did with the paddle component. And now you can see we have the blocks here, and they uh, they work kind of they work really well. Um, let's add a plus two here just to give some se separation between them. And that way, there we go. So that just uh, looks a little bit a little bit a little bit better on center. Okay, and there we go. So now all we have to do is just do that for. Um, let's also go ahead and make this not not necessarily sixty. Let's make the height like uh, I don't know. Let's make it like a uh, twenty-five. Can we do that? Yeah, there we go. That just looks a little bit uh, a little bit better. A lot better, actually. Okay, so now that we have done that, let's go ahead and uh, we can just pretty much copy this and paste it four times, three times. One, two, three. There we go. So now here, the only thing that we're going to update is change this um, zero for the y to 25, and then plus here is going to be 25, 50, and then finally 75. Okay, let's also change the colors. So here we have blue, then green, then yellow. And then finally, oh, what was the other color? Red. All right, and now, there we go. We have this uh, rainbow of, uh, of, uh, of blocks. There we go, so that's good. Um, and uh, those are the blocks essentially done. Okay, and other than that, then next time we're gonna be taking a look at implementing the uh, ball functionality. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna see you there, till soon. Hello there and welcome back to this Projects in Java course where today we're going to be continuing our uh, game project called Trillo and uh, today we're going to be implementing the uh, ball, actual ball functionality. So if we run it now you're going to see that we get the blocks and uh, we can actually go ahead and start the app and we can move but we don't actually have any, a ball to actually break the blocks. So that's sort of well, <laughs> like the most important part so let's go ahead and actually implement that also. So we have a ball here already created. Um, now we need to go ahead and draw it. So here we can just do ball dot draw g, and then this just like everything else. And now you're gonna see that if we run it, it it's there. Um, it, it, it's kind of a kind of weird, weird, weirdly drawn. Let's change the uh, the width here. Where is it? Ah, oh, there we go. So with height, yeah. Um, let's try 35. There we go, that looks a lot better. So obviously change it. If you have a different image, go ahead and change it on your own. But yeah, there we go. So now we have our ball. Um, of course, it's not actually updating when we start the game. So let's close that. Let's go to our uh, our game here, uh, our update method. There we go, our update method. And this is actually where all the magic is going to happen. So here for ball, um, inside block, we need to add... We need to add a uh, move x. So let's here. Let's just do um, int move x, and then also let's do move y as well. Um, what I actually? Yeah. And then here in the constructor, we can just do move x equals zero, and then move y equals zero. So this is going to be the actual amount that we're going to be moving. Um, or actually, on the other hand, we just let's let's do it to three. Let's change it to three here. I think that uh, that'll be good. Okay, so um, we're, that, that's going to be the amount that we're going to be moving to, um, on the x-axis x and then also on the y-axis as well. Okay, so here what we're going to do is ball dot uh, x is equal to, um, no, we can do plus equals ball dot um, move x plus, yeah, ball dot move x. There we go. Simple as that. Okay. Um, now we should just be able to do if ball.x is more than get width. So let's get the width of this component. Get width um, minus, and let's see, this is going to be the size of our actual um, ball here. Um, it's going to be 25. Minus 25. Um, so yeah, so if the x is more than get width uh, minus 25, um, and um, let's see, so ball dot, 
Um, what else would this be? Yeah, ball dot x is less than zero as well. Or actually, or or we can do or here. You're gonna see where I'm going with this in a second. We're gonna do ball dot move x is equal to um, times equals negative one. So we're gonna reverse it essentially. Okay, and in theory that should actually make it so that we just move. So let's try. Let's try to do this. Um, okay, and there we go. So you can see now our ball moves constantly to the x to the left and right. And so yeah, that's also very. That's actually very good. Um, so now we got the um, x-axis done. Let's go ahead and implement the y-axis as well. So here we're going to do if uh, ball dot y is uh, is less than zero. Or uh, let's see, yeah, ball dot intersect paddle. Then we're gonna go ahead and do ball dot move y. Reverse that also negative one. All right. So actually here, um, this ball dot intersect will check will will uh, will check if ball intersects with paddle with this paddle here that we have, and so that way it's gonna reverse it. So now, well, I mean actually right now it yeah it it should. No, no, yeah, it should work. If we do right here, we're gonna do ba dot y. No, I'm sorry, ball dot. Nope, uh, dot y is equal to, um, or no, plus equals ball dot move y. All right, there we go. Okay, looks good. Now, if we run this, you're gonna see. There we go. So you can see it just uh, it just jumped off, and there we go. So now we can actually move this and you know, hit our ball. Of course, it doesn't actually do anything to the corresponding um, blocks, right? So it just sort of flows right through it. So that's what we need to implement right now. So here we're going to do is uh, four. No, it's going to be after that. So after we update the Y, we're going to do four block B. Um, or actually, on the other hand, we can just do blocks dot for each yeah just like uh, like we did up there there we go take it in block as input and here we can do if um, ball dot nope 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 um, ball dot intersects block there we go we're gonna do um, block dot destroyed is equal to true, and then also um, ball dot move y is equal to times equals negative one. There we go. So we're gonna reverse it and then also change the move y. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, run this. Let's see how this works. All right, and there we go. So you can see we're now breaking blocks. We're uh, we're doing everything that uh, we need. So um, looks looks pretty cool, right? I mean, it's uh, it's an essentially a working game. Of course, we we would uh, whoop. Uh, what just happened there with the thing? Um, okay, that's odd. Uh, let's still try to read them and run that. We seem to have an error here. It's not breaking the uh, the, the, the 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 innermost layer, the yellow layer. Not not, not really the innermost. Yeah, so it's not breaking it for some reason. That's weird. Um, huh. Okay, let's take a look at why that's happening. Um, okay, all right. So the reason that that was happening is just, uh, it's actually pretty simple. Right here, we just forgot to add a ball that intersects block and and block block dot destroyed. So uh, it was actually, um, you know, hitting the destroyed block. So that's why we were getting the, uh, the error. Uh, well, not really the error, just uh, the functionality mishap, the bug. Um, okay, so now you can see uh, if we go ahead and do it, there we go, you guys can see it breaks the yellows, breaks uh, the, 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 the greens, it breaks all of it. And now you have uh, pretty much successfully created our game. So there we go, so that looks very good. Um, and there we go, so as you can see, we lost. Um, of course, now there are a few more uh, upgrades that we can add to our game. We can maybe uh, make a start screen, make a uh, end screen, and so on and so on. But we are actually going to be doing that in the next episode. Hello, then welcome back to this Projects in Java course, where today we're actually going to be going ahead and uh, finishing up our second project. 
And today we're just going to be adding a start screen and an end screen. So if you run our application right now, we have this, uh, we just start up, you know, we press enter and it starts up and we go and everything worked great. But then when we lose, nothing happens and at the beginning, nothing happens. So that's what we're going to be fixing. We're going to add, be adding a start screen and an end screen. So it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, first of all, let's just create a J button here in the main. So we're going to be a start, start J button equals new J button. We're going to be implementing a very, very simple start screen. Let's import J button. There we go. And let's call it, uh, I don't know, start. That kind of makes sense for the text. Now let's also go ahead and um, create a J frame. Frame start screen equals new J frame. There we go. And here we can do uh, start screen. Actually, we can just copy this right here. Pretty much all of it. Let's copy that and then just um, paste in start screen. All right, so a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to set the visible uh, here to false. And then here we're going to set the start screen to add the start button. All right, there we go. Now when we go and run this, you're going to see here how we get the start button. And then we can click that. Or actually, yeah, we forgot to add the uh, listener for the start button. We're going to do start, start dot add action listener. And then here we're going to just do listener, whoops, like this. There we go. Lambda function here. And then here we're going to do start screen dot set visible false. And then uh, panel, no, um, frame dot set visible true simple as that there we go that's our start screen let's run this okay and now we get the button start and there we go so now we have our game and we can actually start it playing it and uh, so that's that's pretty cool okay so let's close that now we need to implement an end screen as well so to do this we're going to have a block breaker panel here uh where is it yeah right here and then here at uh, let's let's condense these methods so that we can actually see what, what exactly we're working with here all right there we go so this is going to be in uh, an update here Yep. So here, if we're going to do if, actually, no, down here, we're going to do if ball dot y is less than is more than, yeah, um, get height, let's get the height of the uh, this current component, um, ball dot y is more than get height, we're going to go ahead and actually end the game. So uh, let's see, how could we do this? Uh, well, first of all, we need to we need to create a reference to our main thread here that's actually running. So let's create a reference to this thread. Um, so right here, and keep pressed. We have this thread. On the other hand, now that I think about it, it's gonna be yeah. So let's create a thread here. Um, thread, thread. Okay, there we go. Here we can just do thread equals new thread. Okay. And then here we can just do thread dot start. All right, looks good. Um, now here uh, we can just do thread dot stop. And while we're on that note, we can also um, here into the constructor we can pass in a um, main main. So a reference to the actual main class. On the other hand, now that I think about it, it actually won't work, will it? Yeah, so it won't work. Um, we're going to need to pass in two references. We need, we're, we're going to need to pass in a reference to the uh, J frame, to the start screen, and then also the we're going to need an end screen as well. So let's create an end screen. Actually, we can just go to go ahead and go back to the start screen. Yes, yeah, so that'll work as well. So here, let's just pass in an, a reference to the start screen and then the end screen as well. So here, we're going to go ahead and do block, new block breaker panel, and then let's just take this down here like that. And here we're going to pass in uh, frame comma start screen. All right, there we go. Let's um, change constructor. Let's add the parameters. There we go. All right, and then here, so we can't do the constructor. So here we're going to do uh, J frame main frame. Okay, and then J, and then yeah, well, actually we just declare it multiply, and then and then start screen. There we go. So then, now here, what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, I think it's pretty simple. This dot main frame equals frame, 
Okay, and then this dot start screen equals start screen. All right, there we go. And then on here, we're, all we're going to do is, uh, or actually, is, uh, is, 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 is stop done. Can we do interrupt? There we go. Is that deprecated? No? Okay. So then here, what we're going to go ahead and do is um, uh, main frame dot set visible false. All right, there we go. And then um, start screen dot set visible true. All right, there we go. Looks good. So now let's make sure that this actually works. Let's run this. All right, let's, there we go. Let's uh, lose on purpose here. Okay, so we seem to be getting an error here. And uh, oh, okay, I see. So the problem here is that we're interrupting the thread. Uh, we're going to have to do that's actually pretty simple. It's just do equals no. There we go. Simple as that. Um, and then also now, so we can run this. Um, we, we will. It won't actually work. Um, so yeah, let's run this. Let's start. And as you can see here, it's going to go ahead and work seemingly okay. But then here, when we click start, it's actually not going to run since um, this is actually saved. So instead here, what we need to do is go ahead and reset everything back to its uh, to its original state. So to do this, all we have to do really is create a reset method here. There we go. And uh, in here, uh, let's just do void reset. All right, there we go. And here we can just copy all of this. There we go. And here we can just call reset. Simple as that. All right, and then also let's now put uh, all of these declarations in here as well. Whoops, there we go. New array list block. Then also with this. Whoops, there we go. And then also same with paddle also. And then here we can do blocks is equal to. There we go. All right, looks good. So now we can delete the actual declarations here or assignments. Instantiations. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, block paddle. Forgot. Didn't need to delete that. There we go. All right, and now, so now we should actually be good to go. So let's make sure that it actually works now. Start. There we go. All right, let's lose. All right, everything gets reset and start again. Uh, okay, that's odd. Uh, it seems to be that we're still getting the uh, the error here. Oh, okay, and that's, that's actually because we don't actually call reset here. So that's why we're getting there. So we forgot to actually call reset. There we go. So now let's run this. Hopefully now everything should be good to go. All right, and there we go. So we're back immediately in it. And uh, so yes, yeah, so there we go. So now we have a start screen and an end screen. Everything works um, seemingly well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, well, I mean, it's, huh, that's weird, that's a weird error. Let's see what uh, what we can do about this. Um, let's try, oh, okay, I see the problem here. So we need to do reset right up here. Just after that. There we go. All right, and now, if we, whoops, let's go to Java here. Let's start, uh, let's go ahead and lose. All right, there we go, and start again, and there we go. So that uh, seems to be a little bit better. Yeah. All right, and there we go. So now let's remove the initial um, enter that we need to do. So right here, let's not do VK enter. We just need to do this immediately. So here, um, we, we can just do this in uh, in reset, I think. No, it's not doing reset. Let's do, hmm. on the other hand, though, when would it be best to do it? Because I feel as though I'll do in the constructor here. That should be good. Okay. So now let's see if this works. Uh, whoops, we got an exception. Hmm, okay, that's odd. Um, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Let's do after reset, of course. Since the ball isn't actually instantiated yet, that's where we're getting the error. There we go. All right, and now we should. Finally, be good to go. All right, yeah, there we go. It's it's working. All right, and there we go. So we've actually implemented successfully our very first, um, you know, sort of space invader-like game called uh, Trillo. So now, if we were to lose here, um, let's try to lose. There we go. We're back to the start menu, and we can now restart the game, and uh, it immediately starts for us. So yeah, there we go. Um, everything is working 
as expected. All right, so other than that, then that is all for this project. Um, next time we're going to be starting our next project, which is also be going to be is going to be very very fun. So anyway, um, I, I did try to keep things as simple as possible here. Um, so yeah, there, there, there definitely would be better ways to do a lot of these things. But um, again, I just for the sake of simplicity and to show off the actual features that there are, I went ahead and did it um, this way. Uh, what you can do, that's actually pretty cool, is um, adding a, a power-up system. So randomly, the blocks you sort of uh, actually go ahead and hit, they can give you more, more balls, essentially, that would fly around the screen and hit with more of the blocks. That's also something fun that you can do for, as that extra credit, sort of, for homework. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.